Now, the radio programme presented by Laurie Taylor. Hello. Here's a very special radio message from somewhere in the middle of the Mediterranean. The Voice of Peace, a radio station which for nearly 20 years has been broadcasting its mixture of Pacific politics and Western pop lyrics to the State of Israel. The man behind the station is A.B. Nathan, a man whose principles and practice have now earned him a jail sentence. But as Jonathan Friedland reports, the station and its message are as strong as ever. From somewhere in the Mediterranean, peace, love, and good music. The voice of peace is your voice. 24 hours a day. It may seem an odd mix, but that's the formula that's made the voice of peace unlike anything else on Israeli radio. A blend of pop music from the West with a call for peace in the Middle East, and all of it in English. It beams its message from the Peace Ship, a fairly rickety old freighter moored off the coast of Tel Aviv, just outside Israeli waters and Israeli jurisdiction. The station is the brainchild of A.B. Nathan, the peace campaigner who became a legend in Israel in 1966 when he flew his private plane, the Shalom One, to Egypt at a time when the two countries were still enemies. It was a year later that he started dreaming about the voice of peace. Well, the whole idea came to me just before the war, 1967 war, when I heard the Arab broadcast calling for war and the annihilation of Israel. Then I heard the Israeli radio that were broadcasting what the Arabs were saying, putting a lot of fear in the minds of people. It was at that time I dreamt to have an independent radio station that could call on both sides and warn them about the disasters of war try to bring some reason into the area. I had to speak to A.B. Nathan on the telephone because he's in jail, a prisoner of conscience according to Amnesty International. He was imprisoned for repeatedly meeting Yasser Arafat under the law which prohibits contacts between Israelis and the PLO. He's been inside since October last year, a fact listeners to the Voice of Peace are reminded of on the hour, straight after the only jingle in the world to feature the voice of Israel's former premier, the late Menachem Begin. No more war, no more bloodshed. Today, Thursday, February the 27th, is the 141st day of A.B. Nathan's imprisonment. A.B. Nathan has been sent to prison for violating the law which prohibits Israelis from talking to the Palestinian leadership. It's a great loss to the station. A.B. Nathan is not just the founder and owner of the Voice of Peace, constantly writing off its debts with his own money, he also used to be one of its most distinctive voices. You're listening to The Voice of Peace, broadcasting from somewhere in the Mediterranean. Before he was jailed, A.B. Nathan would break the all-music format for a phone-in programme, with himself as host. He says that to get peace, you have to talk to your enemy. So he'd encourage Jews and Arabs to ring in and talk to each other, through him. On his last night as a free man, he hosted a special programme all about his own life and times. Why protest the law? Because today they tell you don't talk to the PLO. Tomorrow they can come up with a law and say don't talk to Arabs. And the day after they can say shut up, don't talk at all. This attitude is not Jewish, it's not Israeli, it is not human. It's hard enough to imagine the head of a British commercial radio station imprisoned for his beliefs. Harder still to imagine him continuing to run things from his prison cell. So how does A.B. Nathan manage it? Well, first we're allowed to use the telephone. Where I'm in contact with the ship every day. Second, secondly, I've given permission to get my manager to come to visit me once a week, especially to make payments and checks, etc. And I'm in touch with them all the time. So if I was freer with the telephone, I could do a lot more, but they don't allow me to talk on the radio station or make any broadcasts, which is understandable. And all I can do is to uh, try to solve problems that may have and contact people to make sure that, uh, you know, even contact advertisers, etc., from the prison. 
That must be painful for a man who is such a notoriously hands-on boss, known for his habit of using the ship-to-shore phone to demand a change in music, often mid-record. On the receiving end of that treatment are the disc jockeys, usually British, always young. For them, the voice of peace is a training ground like no other. Thrown in at the deep end of the Mediterranean, they often broadcast for six hours on end, six days a week, for little more than pocket money. And addressing a foreign audience isn't without its problems either. That's Karen White and she's getting all romantic. It's your voice of peace. And I'm going to play one of the best records I've heard in a long time now. It's from Yehuda Polikez. I hope I've said that right. And this is Yakor's Ladder. <laughs> Pronunciation is not the only problem. The equipment on the peace ship, which was converted into a floating station back in 1969, may have been state-of-the-art then, but it's pretty aged now. 19-year-old Nigel Grover, who heard about the voice of peace at his local hospital radio station in Kent, discovered that broadcasting on the water is not always plain sailing. I just opened the mic and had to just start another record because it had quite intro. And I just wave just hit the side of the boat really hard and I fell off my chair. I kicked the desk, of course the stylus jumped. So it was in the middle of another Jackie Graham track, totally different to what I wanted. And it, so I had two records going out and out once. And I was, all I could do was lie on the floor. So, you know, it took about five seconds, you know, to get everything under control. Okay, it's good radio, but it's very annoying, you know. <laughs> Not everyone is convinced that the voice of peace is such good radio. Jacob Wertschafter, who writes about the media for the Jerusalem Post, thinks it's too much of a one-man band. Amy Nathan has succeeded in making himself a major celebrity. Amy Nathan is the voice of peace. We have his meditation hour where we hear about how to be nice people and how to relax and how to work on our careers and how not to give up. And other than that, there really are no other voices on the station except for the DJs introducing songs. The station, despite its name and despite the groovy t-shirts with the dove on it, um, is pretty lukewarm. Israel, like Britain, has elections soon, and A.B. Nathan has vowed that despite his own incarceration and numerous financial troubles, the station will stay on air until then at least, broadcasting in a region used to the sound of war its own message of peace.